Dr. Robert Clifford, AO, is an exemplar of the Tasmanian brand. Over three decades, his ideas and drive have led the international fast ferry industry. The former West Coast lobster fisherman's business, INCAT, has built more of the world's large-scale fast ships than any other company. A biography of Clifford, published in 2009, used a quote from his father as its title, The Bastard's a Genius. I've been a uh, boat builder all my life, ever since having a wooden fishing boat uh, built at Triabunna, uh, built by very traditional uh, shipbuilding methods. When the Tasman Bridge was down, of course, we built three vessels while the bridge was down, sold all those vessels after the uh, bridge was restored, and of course kept on building boats for the, uh, the basically the Queensland market and the Australian market. and. Uh, I've been boat building ever since. All the boats have become bigger as the years have rolled by and uh, today we're building 112 metre boats. We can build 130. We're working on a plan for 130 metre boat at the moment. 1,200 passengers, 1,000 tonne of cargo. Uh, yes, compared to the early days, the boats are very much larger. We learned a lot of lessons out of the uh, bridge disaster in Tasmania in 75. Uh, we learnt that we had to move a lot of people quickly. Uh, the quickest way to move people was with uh, catamarans, we found. And uh, of course, not just moving people across the water fast, we had to load them and unload them quickly. So we've been selling that concept ever since. And today we can move uh, people across the river plate, for example, in faster time than they can go by aircraft. Not by the flying time, but the total time of uh, the journey for the passengers can quite often be faster by water than it can be by air. The vessel number we're doing at the moment is number 69. There's been a few that have missed out and there's been a few others that didn't have numbers, so approximately 70 boats, I guess. Or in today's dollars, we'd be getting up towards $600 uh, million, uh, I think, something like that. It's a pretty large number. Of course, it's not all profit, a great deal of that $600 million has gone into people's pockets in Hobart. The present vessel is being built for a South American customer. Uh, it's the eighth boat that he's bought from us over the years. And uh, he wants to go faster than any other boat. Uh, he wants to compete against aircraft across the River Plate, which means that he wants a boat uh, that can do over 50 knots with 1,200 passengers. And of course that can only be done with a uh, gas turbine powered boat. And economically in this day and age, the only way to run a gas turbine is with uh, economical uh, uh, liquid natural gas. There are very much uh, cost benefits in uh, liquid natural gas. We believe the price will be about one quarter the cost of distillate. That's a, a moving feast of course. We're never really sure what the fuel price is going up every day. Uh, the other advantage of natural gas is that this, the world has a lot of it and uh, it's un underutilised at the moment and uh, of course distillate is getting more and more difficult to come by and more and more expensive so we have to find alternate fuels that are more friendly and uh, or environmentally friendly. I think Tasmania is an excellent place to do business. I'm born here for a start so I may be biased but the fact remains is that if we were building boats in uh, almost any other place of the world, it would not work out as well. We've got the uh, complete marine atmosphere here to, uh, to work with. We've got uh, a workforce that are very largely boat owners themselves, uh, so they understand boats. The economics of building here in a relatively small place like Hobart are very good. It's not too difficult to attract good people to the company. Uh, the workforce, uh, they're an intelligent group of people. We need intelligent people. Uh, we're lucky that they're available. Their lifestyle is, uh, is good in Tasmania. They don't have to travel far to work, etc. Their cost of living is, is quite reasonable. Uh, and their job satisfaction out of building the product for the rest of the world is, is high. Yeah, Tasmanian branding is very important. We've run off it for many years, the fact that we're a, uh, you know, a Tasmanian company able to build the best product in the world, uh, which we're very proud of. And of course, the, uh, the, our Tasmanian workforce is the reason we've been able to do that. So, very, very happy with Tasmania.
The future looks very good, particularly when uh, we take into consideration the move by oil shipping to uh, liquid natural gas as a, as a fuel. Uh, we're one of the first companies in the world that's been able to uh, modify the vessels to suit liquid natural gas engines and uh, we think that that's going to be a big thing. The marine industry has been in a very much a decline the last few years, but the bottom of the cycle is there and we feel quite strongly that it's on the up and up. For 15 years now we've been working on the, the wing. This is a vessel that attempts to uh, become almost airborne. Like 95% of it's lifted out of the water onto a column of air. Uh, meaning that uh, the resistance has been cut, uh, air being uh, 600 times thinner than water, uh, we can go faster for less power. Uh, very, very successful so far. We, we started off with 500 horsepower on our first model and we're now down to 125 horsepower and uh, going the same speed. So it's, we think it'll be a very successful way of uh, reducing resistance and of course uh, meaning we can carry payload uh, by uh, burning less fuel. Dr Clifford, who is in his 60s, said he will dedicate the rest of his life to finding more efficient, economic and environmentally friendly ways of moving people and cargo across the world's oceans. His daughter Kim and son Craig are senior executives at INCAT's Prince of Wales Bay shipyard. <laughs>